part one of this video, uh, we're going to talk about how we can actually generate uh, different types of views uh, from a 3D model. And what you'll learn from this video is that just by having a 3D model, uh, you can actually generate um, a lot of different views, all of your elevations, um, you know, section cuts. Uh, so it, it becomes quite effective uh, in, in that way. So the first thing that we're going to do is, um, well, if you look right here, I have a two story uh, small house. Um, so it's, you know, just a small house that has window panes, it has a staircase, it has different types of, you know, partition walls. And um, we're going to use this as our model uh, for generating all of our views. So uh, just keep in mind that uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually, you know, pick the different views and we're also going to use the make 2D command. Um, so obviously make sure that your model is clean and that, you know, there aren't any open lines as well. So let's go ahead and click out of this. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select our model. And um, we're going to go to each of our views. If you look at our windows, if you click on the actual tab itself and you click Zoom Selected, it'll actually start to focus in on those views. Okay? And obviously make sure that your shaded view is on as well. Um, so now that we have this view, uh, what's going to happen is when we make 2D this, it's going to move it to our origin, which is 0, 0, 0. So let's go ahead and start with the back view. Let's select it. We're going to type in Make 2D. And for these options, we're going to click OK for current view. OK, everything's good. And it brought it right to the origin. And this is a back view. So you can see we have the windows. We have uh, that wall as well. We're going to move it up. And we're going to move it in the corner. And then we're going to do this again uh, for the left view, which is the back of the building. So we're going to take this. We're going to type in Make 2D again. OK. And there we go. And now what you'll realize is we only have the left view and you have the back view. We want to make sure we have the other two views as well. So the way that we're going to do this is if you go to this pull down right here, you can actually pull down, go to set view, and you can go to the opposite. So from left, we're going to go to our right view. And that is a front entrance. So let's go ahead and make 2D this as well. Okay. So that is our front entrance right there. And same thing for this, we're going to go to the pull down, we're going to set our view. So from back, we're going to go to front. So we can see that front elevation. We're going to select it again and type in make 2D. Okay. Now, there you go. So we have all four elevations. And what you'll see is that uh, a lot of times with make 2D, um, there are some lines that aren't translated correctly. Uh, you want to make sure you clean up all of your drawings uh, when you get the chance. So for example, um, we want to take out some of these lines because in a real wall, those would not exist. So we're going to take care of those lines. So let's delete them. Um, so yeah, we have all four elevations and it was done really quickly. And that's, you know, um, the effectiveness of having a 3D model. You can generate those views very quickly. So the next view that we're going to have is uh, we're going to have the uh, isometric view. Now, an isometric view, uh, what it means is that um, the angle from the ground plane of that view is equal on both sides. So let's go ahead and go to isometric and I can explain it further. Let's go to isometric and we can pick any kind of orientation. So we chose southeast. So what you'll realize is that if you look at the plane that exists at the very bottom, they're going to be equal on both sides. So we have a 30 degree angle on this side and we have a 30 degree angle on the other side. And that's why isometric views are pretty effective. Um, they help in showing the entire building mass. It's not really distorted. So let's select everything. Uh, we're going to type in Make 2D again. OK. And we're going to go to our top view, and it's right over here. And once again, just make sure you clean up anything that uh, you feel doesn't belong. And you can see that some of the mullions uh, didn't actually you know, turn into a drawing. So we're gonna actually have to draw those in manually. So yeah, just make sure that um, if there's anything missing in your Make 2D drawing, you can always go back and you know just quickly fix it up. Um, this happens a lot when you have start you start to have curved surfaces. Um, sometimes they might not translate um, correctly into a Make 2D form. There we go. So we have our isometric view and we have all of our elevations. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a exploded isometric view. Now an exploded isometric view is, uh, is useful because it starts to show all of the elements um, in that building. So let's go ahead and take our building. Uh, we're going to copy, Control-C, Control-V, and we're going to paste it um, 
a little bit further away just so that we don't mess with our original building. So let's go to our views. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start to actually um, move the elements out. We're going to kind of explode it outwards. So let's take our elements the furthest out. So we're going to take our door and we're going to start to move it out. So we have our door frame. We have our, um, our door. Same thing, you know, with this curtain wall system. Uh, we're going to actually take the mullions, move it out, and then we can actually take the window pane and move it out as well. Um, so forth. And of course, you know, same thing with this as well. So the whole idea of this is to kind of show the different elements uh, that are, you know, in part of that building. Um, keep in mind that if this was an actual curtain wall, you wouldn't actually have um, an opening. You would actually have different types of panels. But just for the sake of this project, uh, we are showing how uh, this is done. <clears throat> so keep on, you know, moving the elements outwards just so we can actually see how they kind of align. And the same thing is going to happen, you know, with the roof, of course. Uh, we're going to start to actually move it up uh, as well. Same thing with the floor. Um, I recommend actually keeping the staircase and the floor together. It's just, you know, it's more, it's, there's more clarity to it. Um, yeah. So now that we've kind of started to move our elements apart, um, what I recommend is actually drawing guidelines uh, because we want, you know, a nice point of reference for us to understand how it was exploded. So let's make a new layer. Let's call this a projection layer. And uh, we're going to make this, let's say, red lines for now. So let's double click on that layer and we're going to start to make our projection lines, which kind of starts to show how um, everything was kind of moved around. So you can just use a line command and you can start to draw one line and just copy and paste it um, uh, to the from the wall to the curtain wall. So once I drew that line, I just type the copy command and I just copy in again and again. Um, and the whole idea of this is just to show um, where it originated from because this curtain wall originated from this wall. Um, just in terms of clarity, it helps. And uh, of course, uh, same thing with this door as well. And that's just kind of preliminary. Let's do this real quick. Um, these I know are all the same uh, depth, so we can just uh, copy these real quick. And you have to consider what view you have as well. So what view shows the most information? So let's just finish this. And um, all right, so that's kind of how it looks right now. Um, you can see that you can see the projection line starting to connect everything. Uh, we're going to do the same thing, you know, with the floor plate as well. Um, we're going to start to make those guidelines. Um, with the floor plate, uh, the convenient thing is that everything kind of lines up already. So we can just take these lines and we can use our gumball and just start to actually increase our height, stretch it out and actually move it up. So then we have all of our projection lines. And if you have uh, two floors as well, you can even just drag that floor down too. Um, the whole idea is to show as much information as you can in one drawing. Let's move this down a bit more. Um, it's actually conflicting. Um, so let's move it down right around. Yeah. So this is our exploded isometric view. Uh, we can see all of our elements. We can see that we have two floors. We can see that we have, you know, an exterior wall. We have um, a curtain wall system. We have doors. We have a roof as well. So since we have all of these elements, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to make 2D this as well. So let's kind of move around to get our proper view. Select everything and type in make 2D. And we'll go back to our top view and we can actually see how this make 2D turned out. And um, you might need to go in there and just check, uh, you know, which where there are mistakes uh, in the line drawing. Um, a lot of times, the more complex the line drawing, the more times um, Rhino will make a mistake. But so far, you know, it seems pretty accurate. It seems like a pretty good isometric. Um, so yeah, you know, it, it looks pretty good. Um, and then we'll, of course, export that as well. So there we go. So really quickly, we have, you know, our four elevations, we have our, you know, isometric and we have our exploded isometric view. Um, so that's great. 
the last thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to.